remember to like and subscribe and uh, comment and share. And uh, we really need the support. Um, mm -hmm. the algorithms don't like us because we're just not, you know, part of the, the current zeitgeist. But that's okay. We're going to shatter the zeitgeist. So <laughs> the, I'm, what I'm going to oh, yeah. talk about first, I wasn't going to talk about it first, but I really think I, I, I rewatched it last night and it's really lingering with me. So this is a 2023 uh, Belgian film called uh, Me Megalomaniac. A director's name, uh, Kamal Ukwayua. I can pronounce French, but I had a hard time with this this name. Um, he's made other movies. I they're not readily available. I might track them down at some point. Uh, the main actress is named Eline Schumacher, and I'm not sure if she's German, Belgian, or French. Uh, I looked her up because you know I immediately got a crush on her, and. She won two Best Actress Awards at two major uh, genre film festivals for this. Uh, other than that, the film sank like a rock, you know, except in, you know, parts of Europe. But uh, now Shudder has, you know, Shudder funded, you know, bringing it over here to put on Shudder. So they're trying to promote it. So hopefully that'll help. Uh, it is one of the most darkest and depressing movies I've ever seen. Uh, but the journey of her character is heartbreaking but it ends up satisfying karmically and uh it's a man to get there i mean so you know you take a, you take this idea of the mo the woman going mad you know like like repulsion or possession even though i'm not convinced she was crazy uh, i think she was just uh, affected by that that being chuck i know chuck's seen it so um but you know this one is this one's more subtle and lo you know low key Every shot is beautiful. Like there's absolutely no shot in the movie that's not like you could frame and worship, you know. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful movies I've seen in years. And um, which makes the subject matter, you know, it, it's interesting. We talked about that dichotomy earlier. And uh, so anyway, basically she's an overweight and the, though, you know, in my mind, voluptuous and attractive, but you know, within the movie context, She's supposed to be uh, uh, overweight and unattractive. But um, <laughs> so um, she is like uh, really shy and she works in a factory and basically she's just like a, a, a maid. She just like mops the floors, empties the mop buckets, wa you know, cleans the walls. I mean, she does like all the same routines for the building every day and just these mundane things. She lives with her brother in this giant house that they inherited and he does not work and uh his name's felix her name's martha felix and martha are the offspring of the mons butcher or the mons killer so that was a real life murderer in in uh in belgium in the mid 1990s and he killed five women and he cut them all up in creative ways put them in bags and all the bags were found but the killer was never caught so this movie presupposes that he survived and ultimately passed but he had spawn so the movie opens you know very weird and creepy and it's basically him because he's a very creepy looking actor kind of like that really creepy looking actor that's in the human centipede like you're like you can't believe someone looks like this not deformed but just like bug out crazy so this guy's kind of like that though i think some of it's makeup but um and his wife it's, which you can't imagine that he got married his wife is like practically demonic uh, which you know, makes sense if you're a serial killer and she's giving birth to their second child and it's just super bloody it's not like graphic like what's happening you know down there but it is like blood everywhere and she's screaming understandably and her eyes start to turn red there's all kinds of weird little flourishes artistically through the movie that are surreal and you can kind of take them how you want um but uh watching is their son and he's just like this you know like watching the act of birth this violent act of birth so it's strongly implied that the wife died then at some point the killer abandoned them but he left them this giant house uh and some money so felix but not a huge amount of money but enough to get by so felix you know he's like a goth guy he's real dry he's real skinny he's got long black hair you know he's very pallid and he's very you know manner the way he acts he's very antisocial, misanthropic not to say much uh he has carried on the father's trade 
And so we do get some scenes early of, of him pummeling some of the victims who are all female. And, uh, you know, so you get flashes of the violence. You know, you basically, basically you don't get like all the context. You get like, you know, he opens his, his car and a woman's in the trunk and then he goes to do something and then he comes back and, you know, obviously he's mad and, you know, whatever. But instead of just, you know, going through the motions of this, you know, they immediately close up on him just beating the, you know, it's breaking her face open pretty much. It's real fast, but it's just like, okay, yeah, they just had the money shot there, you know. Um, but so, you know, you don't get a good impression of this guy early on. Mm -hmm. Martha seems really sweet and and mentally ill. She's She's got diabetes. She's also got a thyroid problem. And um, she doesn't take part in any of this. She's aware, uh, but she kind of stays in her room and he has a bedroom and he has an adjoining room where he how cuts up the bodies and gets the bags ready and everything. And he's always like, do not ever go in my room or that other room. Um, at one point she does go in his room and she gets on his laptop and he is, he has filmed some of his murders. Um, and the way they're, they just show part of one really fast. It's like he, he must've mounted the camera on the victim. I guess they're tied up. And so you're seeing it as a POV of the victim and him coming towards her and getting ready to cut her. And, and then she like slams the thing shut. And so, of course, he, she lies to him a lot. He always knows when she's lying. Uh, the first time I watched this, I felt like he hated her and resented her presence. Second time, well, I got to, after I saw the ending and then I started watching, I, I see it totally differently. I see that he's a guy who can't love he's misanthropic he's evil but he deeply loves his sister and from her or literally from her birth he has raised her and helped her deal like with the money he has he goes and buys her expensive medication his, his only requirements are don't go in those rooms don't look at my stuff and keep your job keep your mundane job so people will not suspect us of any you know wrongdoing one of us needs to be out in the public it's not going to be me you know i'm busy killing women but um he doesn't say that but uh he doesn't say many words in his sentences uh and so he kind of calls her out whenever she lies about something she does and she's always apologetic and you know he's a little cruel but he's right so they do need to you know if they don't want to get caught and he brings that up a few times do you, do you want to die in a prison you know and she's never done anything to anybody. Um, but then the most disturbing scene in this movie for me happened early on. And it was the least violent, the least, well, okay, the least bloody or anything or graphic. But there's these two uh, half wits she works with. And I mean, they can't, I don't know if the actors really look this way or it's makeup. But again, they're people who look really freaky kind of. And, you know, they look like, you know, they're they're like mentally aberrant child molesters, you know. And then it's not far off. Their characters like say all the most ugly things sort of like every day when she walks up to work. He's like, hey, you fucking cunt, you stupid fat bitch. You know, all the, I mean, it's any kind of epithet that's misogynistic or, you know, fat phobic or just mean. They just say it to her, you know, mm -hmm. at work, you know, and nothing, no repercussions. People don't notice. So they have one guy who kind of is a sort of a supervisor ish guy but not exactly he's a lot older and he witnesses them kind of talking shit to her and like uh while she's emptying a mop bucket and like you know i i, I honestly wasn't sure where it was going to go i knew where they wanted it to go but i wasn't sure they were going to do it mm -hmm. but yeah they rape her and and um you know that's it doesn't show much i mean their 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 clothes are on except for the pertinent areas that you don't see and but just her you see part of her face and she's leaning against the wall and he's raping her from behind in front of the mop bucket and it's just really ugly and nasty and it's just like brutal it's fast mercifully but it's just like i don't want this to happen to this character i like this character and then the guy is watching the older guy is watching and he had reprimanded them once about, you know, picking on her. So he's watching. And again, there's a weird level because the first time you watch it, 
you think he's going to maybe come to her rescue at some point or intervene uh, or he's just afraid like they're going to hurt him. And, and that's maybe is part of it. But my, I had this weird suspicion in my mind because I, I think this way. I've seen read too many stories in my life. I thought, what if maybe he's the kind of guy who seems nice and, and normal compared to the other workers, but he wouldn't mind raping her if he had half a chance. And that 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 he's not going to say anything about all this because he's kind of enjoying it, but he'll never admit it because everybody thinks he's a respectable guy. Mm. Well, my theories were right. He doesn't end up raping her, but yes, his his motives by the very end of the movie, it becomes clear that he's just as disgusting as it's just he doesn't mm -hmm. act on it physically um mm -hmm. and but but it's kind of like you know what's that phrase about uh all it takes for an act of evil is a good man doing nothing or something like that and that's mm -hmm. basically what he the role he has he does nothing and you know she comes home she's depressed and all this stuff happens and the brothers guess that you know she's been raped they don't say it exactly but it's very subtle, but it's like, what's that smell? She's taking a shower. And he's like, is it your period? You know, and, and he's not being vulgar. He's just like asking her because they are brother and sister. And she's like, no, no, I had, I finished it. But basically they raped her. She's bleeding. And that's why she's taking a uh, bath. And um, <clears throat> but he knows all of a sudden he's like trying to, you know, get her to tell the truth. And then he's like, okay, whatever. Here's your thyroid. Here's your, here's your medicine for uh, diabetes. And that's how he ends all the conversations, his medicine. He might have stolen the medicine, I don't know. And um, so basically, you know, she's losing her sanity. And she starts to see, like, Dutch angles of things with a camera. She starts to see herself talking to her brother. And it's, you know, shot as though she's physically there. And then down here, she's physically there talking to her brother. So you have to try to divine what's real and what isn't and that increasingly starts to happen to her so you have to kind of it's it's one that you know challenges you like with the point of view and the the realism or the the plausibility or similitude of what she's witnessing um and basically uh just to make a long a long story short um you know the brother finally finds out you know she's been raped because guess what she's pregnant and so she stops working and she has a social worker that comes once a month. So that's kind of how they mark time and, and, and her pregnancy is the social worker comes once a month and it never really goes very well with the social worker. You know, she's kind of rude to her. She's, she doesn't have Tourette's, but she deliberately acts kind of Tourette's like, like she'll accidentally say something like, Oh yeah, I understand that you cunt. She's like, did, did you say you cunt? Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> you know, she does it a bunch of times, but it's, of course, it's in French. So you're reading the translation and, you know, I know a little friend trying to like match it, see what it makes sense. But um, that's the gist of it. But the woman never gets mad at her, never reprimands her, really. She just comes once a month. Is everything OK? Are you still employed? She says, oh, yes, my coworkers are so supportive of me. <laughs> oh, <I love> that. <laughs> and uh, so she's clever that's what i like about her she's one of those quiet uh unassuming people i guess you used to call women like that wallflowers that's really not very nice but uh but but she's really brilliant you know she's really like obviously got this seething intellect but unfortunately she's she's genetically you know gonna go insane ultimately she, she can't really escape it unless she goes and gets more help than this stupid social worker but he doesn't want her to to, to do anything other than Get, do her job i mean and, and he brings her the medicine and he doesn't even like the social worker coming so eventually she does this weird thing she wants a pet she wants it wanted a real pet so he brings her a woman one of his women and they chain her up and he beats the woman you know she's naked except for panties and, and he beats the woman periodically tells her to shut up and he tells her he said you're gonna take care of her this this is your new job and he's like, he's fucking with her mentally. And so she starts feeding, she calls her kitty. And like in her mind, she's pretending it's her cat. And when the woman starts to like yank at the chain, she's like, kitty, stop that. You know, and she like starts feeding her and the woman hates the food. And so she's in the corner and the kid, it's really a lot like my cat, you know, there's a little area in the kitchen, she's there, except she can't leave that area like my cat can. And 
So you see then that she, that seething hatred of all mankind, she has not ever manifested it, but now it's starting to bubble to the surface. And so this is her first acts of like outright cruelty and, and being an accomplice to something he's doing. I mean, he never, she never beats her or anything. It's all like, you know, mental and, and physical abuse. And to be honest, you know, second time I watched that, I was kind of like, yeah, I get it. You know, it's not good. It's not, it's not right. But the way she performs it, it's like, okay, yeah, she's at that point where it's just like, I've stopped giving, I'm stopped giving a fuck. Hmm. And she starts to get some surliness. She gets more surly with the social worker, just verbally. And she becomes more confident when she leaves work. Uh, she's when her pregnancy is near its term, she comes to work and, and she's like, yeah, I don't know when I'll come back. And she's <laughs> chatting. She's aggressively chatting with the three guys. Like, like nothing ever happened. You know, it's almost like she's daring them to attack her. She's pregnant. But she's like, oh, I'm just visiting. Yeah, I'll come back to work after I have a baby. And they're like, oh, you're pregnant. And I'm like, they knew she was pregnant. They noticed she was pregnant. Come on. And then she was like, I want to invite you all over for a dinner. And then I thought, okay, now we're going to get into like the real horror territory. And I was right. She's like, I want to invite you over for a dinner. And they're like, well, no, you know, you know, we can give you presents here, or, you know, or something. And, and, um, I was thinking, you know, don't, don't, don't do anything one on one with these guys. They'll probably kill her next. And so, but she's like totally like smug and confident. She's like, no, I think you'll really enjoy it. And my brother makes this wonderful dish and I make this other, I forgot what the dish was. It sounded good, but, um, and uh, they're like, and the, the older guy's like, I like that dish. Maybe we should go boys and just, you know, just, just go to kind of get along, you know, like, you know, pretend that nothing ever happened. So they all go. And by this time, the, the prisoner has escaped um and that's, that's it you know that she's actually running in the beginning of the movie and you have no idea why this girl's running and not until way into the movie you realize oh that's the kitty that escaped so she escapes but um he does kill the try to kill the social worker he beats her up and and uh social worker keeps trying to get away and um you know he basically goes to do something else and she gets nearing escape, even though she's like tied to this chair and she's like hobbling. And she's really, you know, Martha's really mad at this woman. Like I've said, she's like hates her. She likes to t insult her. So she's like, stop, just stop. And she has in her hand, like an, an iron or a, a pan, you know, like William S. Burroughs said, anybody that can hold a frying pan owns death. <laughs> so it's got like a frying pan. And, and she's like, I told you. And she starts swatting her and she finally just hits her in their head just a little too hard. She didn't mean to. She dies. So she's taking her first life and she's like, well, I told you. And I told, I told you not to do that. So it's like she's getting a little crazier. And so then they have the dinner and it's incredible. I mean, so they're at the dinner and they eat this meal and, uh, they they you know she opens her presents or whatever and they, they're just just boring shit and uh and then they're like uh the the older guy's like oh who 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 who's the father martha and she's like i don't know all of you took turns raping me for weeks mm -hmm. so your guess is as good as mine right and she's like totally confident and flip like you know and i love mama mia with I, yes i loved her, her personality <laughs> when she gets there i mean because these aren't innocent people at all so then and then she's like she's like oh and she turns to the older guy who always just watch and she's like oh yeah and it's one of y'all's and oh yeah whatever his name is you're going to be kind of an uncle of sorts <laughs> <laughs> and so they start she's like i might even name him after you and so the brother's sitting there calmly eating with them um and the guys start to get kind of suspicious of, of the way they're acting you know because they have like one brain cell each so with that one brain cell they're <laughs> able to go something suspicious might be happening so they they like one, one of them has a gun and the and he's kind of like starting to uh brandish it and that's it the brother just gets up and he just goes for it she sits at the table with the older guy, but the two like crazy dumb guys who raped her, 
uh, the brother, they have this bloodbath of a fight. I mean, it is just like five minutes of people. It's kind of like the ending of the series Hannibal, except a lot more bloody, but it's still the same thing. Three guys just slicing at each other for five minutes. And uh, then uh, he's getting the, obviously the serial killers got the advantage over them, but uh, then the older guy comes. And this is when you kind of, when I knew for sure that the worm turned and I was right all along about the guy, he comes out and he happens, he gets, takes a knife from their kitchen and he gets up behind the serial killer and he just starts stabbing him. He's supposed to have stabbed him 25 times, you know? And I'm like, this guy's just an evil motherfucking piece of shit too. And I know he's a serial killer, but they don't know he's a serial killer. And so I'm sitting here rooting for this fucking sick serial killer. Um, and I'm also realizing from the way he put this together, he did it all for his sister. He, I mean, it's not like he wanted her to go mad. He thought her going mad was inevitable. I, I believe he knew that. I mean, he's really a smart guy, even though he's not very verbal. But he's always watching and like thinking. And um, I think he wanted her to hit this point where not so much she was like him exactly, but that she could defend herself and take care of herself in the world, like own herself, even if it was crazy, you know? And he did not like the fact, when he found out she was raped, he was like his his expression, like, like when she got, he found out she was taping herself for a while. And then finally yeah. he finds out she's pregnant and he's just like, he immediately knows this, the bullies at work. He's just like, we have to take care of this now. And I thought he was going to like abort the baby or something. That's exactly what I was thinking. But no, then, then she goes and invites him to dinner. So it's like his idea to lure them there. Because mm. he likes killing people. And he really likes killing people who hurt his sister. So he's the only being he has any fondness for. So unfortunately, he, he loses the fight. But they all do. They're all kind of in a puddle of blood. And she's mm. kind of just in the kitchen still, just really peaceful and kind of blissfully happy. And um, she doesn't know what's reality or not. Before she tells him about the rape, she had, there's a sequence where she really goes out of her mind as in thinks something happening that's real. See, she's been seeing his victims like they're specters. That's, I guess what, that's what she's, that's what we're supposed to imagine they are because it's not really a supernatural film. But she's been seeing, they're in all kinds of weird makeup. And um, she sees them sometimes behind him in a dark room. And so finally they come to a scene where uh, she goes to talk to him and instead of the usual, like brushing her off, giving her medicine and telling her to go to work and leaving, uh, he starts talking to her and she hugs him. And then she's like, well, you know, I just wanted more time with you. She'd already told him that before. She thought that she's really lonely. And he was like, I really can't spend that time with you. I feel like now the reason he couldn't spend time with her, it's not because he didn't want to. It's because he believed that that's just going to make her life worse. She'll become an accomplice to murder. She'll go crazier. She'll be in trouble. And so his protective in, impulse with the dichotomy of what we've seen him do to these women is just, to me, it's just, you know, like, again, you're separating morality from, from aesthetics. I mean, it's just brilliant writing to me. And because it's like, you don't really know how to feel from one minute to another, but I always feel sorry for her. And I loved her at the end. And she just, she was so mean to them. And, but she does have the one scene where she's telling him she wanted to be close to him. him. It's another scene like where in the beginning, she's looking on. And another thing she does is she talks to herself. She's got a voice that tells her, you're fat, you're stupid, you shouldn't have done that. And then she'll turn this way and go, no, I'll do better. And just all through the movie, you're seeing these little things where her bubble's starting to burst. And in this one scene, she imagines her brother does spend time with her and they start kissing. And then they get naked. And then they have sex. And... It's crazy, but and the whole thing is like bathed in red, not blood, but just the way it's shot. And then it, the specters are behind them, and, I, and then I was like, "Okay, the specters are there. It's, it's this isn't really happening." But I did. I'm. I'm. I'll be honest. I did enjoy seeing her naked for a few seconds. I'm not gonna lie. But uh, <laughs> other than that, but it was consensual. But it was all in her head, because then you turn back and the scene restarts with the same conversation, but ends the usual way. So that was kind of her tipping point before she, find, you know, tells him she's pregnant. He learns she's pregnant. So that's the movie, and you know, 
this actress is brilliant and I, I looked her up and she mainly does theater and she has done, done a lot of movies but she is kind of with these awards kind of being noticed and she's like 25 and I just love the fact that she's not a conventional body type but still in my mind like super hot and you know and they thrumped her up a little for the role but she still looks great you know and even though they like put her in kind of flat clothing you could tell she's still curvaceous or maybe I can't because I'm a pervert. I don't know. I look for these things, <laughs> but <laughs> I look for these things. Um, but yeah, then you eventually learn, yeah, you know, I looked her up and yes, yeah, she really is just a curvaceous, you know, but she's overweight, but who cares? See that that's what's so banal about it. It's like, why are these idiots like making fun of her weight? Does anyone do that at work? I mean, is this what they do in Belgium? They, they in a factory, yeah. they really, they tell the women, you're a fat, ugly bitch. You know, but really, I think they're demonstrating that they're they're literal, literally, I know this is a very taboo word, but think about it literally as in functionally. They're mentally retarded and and they're mean and they're sex perverts. So <laughs> the, the, it would do anything, but it takes a while before it sinks into me because it's real slow the way they build all this. So anyway, it's, I love it. I recommend it. It's on Shudder and it really disturbed me. Uh, the rape scene disturbed me, even though it was the least graphic. Um, none of the other scenes disturbed me as far as the violence per se. Some of the times when he, one time when he smashed someone's face in, it was like just so brutal. But mm. you know, that, that was like, whoa. Uh, it was like super jallo all of a sudden. And, but really what disturbed me was the way they treated her and just her being unhappy. You know, and in this just uh, situation, how could you just imagine yourself being this average young woman who works, you know, a menial job, but is obviously highly intelligent, lives in a great giant house. Oh, but she lives with her brother who's a serial killer. Mm. Um, and, and they're the children of an infamous, you know, uncaught serial killer. So I'll stop because I could rave about this movie all night. I really, <laughs> I really loved it. And I got to leave here real quick, but let me try to take the next 10 minutes or less okay. and drop drop what I was thinking about. Okay. okay. First of all, I had said uh, Grizzly Man, but that's a documentary, so we're not doing documentaries. I didn't but, say we weren't doing documentaries. Oh, oh but, okay. Well, yeah. anyway, I, most people know of Grizzly Man. The disturbing aspect uh, yeah. of it is that watching somebody self-destruct like this in such a crazy, obvious way where they're you know out there living with these bears and that they're stupid enough to think that these bears you know like them and know them and aren't going to hurt them. And then, That man was totally insane, literally. Yes, insane. and then, yeah, and he drug his girlfriend along with him. Yeah, to she, the, she finally realized he was insane yeah so too, and too late. so too late yeah they stayed out there past the time that they should and to the he point he told where, her not to leave he told her not yeah. to run away i know but i'm <laughs> saying they stayed there past the time that you, you're supposed to start really leaving the bears alone yeah. because they're going to yeah. start yeah. eating for hibernation purposes you know uh so anyhow so it's an incredibly disturbing movie that way because you're watching someone in real life who just basically caused not just his own death but this uh, uh this poor unfortunate woman's death just because she was you know in love with him and, and you know and he's just he's crazy and then the horrific moment of uh Herzog, the director himself listening to the audio because the uh, audio tapes were running while they were literally being eaten alive by the grizzly bears mm -hmm. and you know it's just like it's a horrific thing even though you don't hear it you just see him responding to it. It's very disturbing. I've I never mean, heard it, but I've disturbing. read I've read the the transcripts with descriptions yeah. of what's happening. Yeah, yeah, and she it's did pretty. Not, it's insane. She did not destroy the tapes. They she apparently put them into a bank a bank vault. Uh, but uh, you know, he he's supposedly the only one who's actually heard them. Isn't that amazing? You're oh my god, Keith. Keith's being kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> 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 Keith, he's, he's stuck in the transporter. He's okay. He didn't. He didn't atomize. Okay, but that up to a, one other one before I leave uh, that most of you may not have ever heard of, and that's the uh, this movie. Uh, oh yes. Oh, of course you have heard of it. Okay, I'm a uh, I'm a leftist piece of Nick, dude. Yeah. Well, very <laughs> few people have. It's not even out on Blu-ray, to my knowledge. Uh, this, not out uh, on but uh, no. yeah, Johnny got his got his gun is an extraordinary uh, anti-war film. 
uh, written and directed by Douglas Trumbo. Um, if you don't know who Trumbo is, just go watch the movie. If you need to <laughs> Trumbo with Brian Cranston, you'll get to know who Dalton Trumbo. Trumbo, Dalton was. Trumbo Dal- yeah, the, Dalton, yeah, Dalton Trumbo. Oh, the blacklisted uh, writer who wrote the novel. You got it. This, you know, the communist who he also wrote, wrote Spartacus. He, ghost wrote spartacus while yes. he was blacklisted yeah uh-huh wow. yeah so he wrote this in 1938 so think about that before we even got into mm. world war ii uh he wrote the the novel uh so in 1971 he got he directed a film adaptation of it johnny got his gun is about as anti-war as you can possibly get and it's it's uh just fantastic it is uh, uh got a very young timothy bottoms plays a soldier uh, um who has just been hit by artillery and waking up in the um in the hospital and he has uh had his face blown off he is his eyes are gone his nose is gone his tongue is gone his ears are gone his legs are gone his arms are gone but he's alive yeah and uh and and so this whole movie and I'm sure the novel may be even more harrowing. Have you, <laughs> you read know? the novel? Yeah. I have not. I have not. I will tell you, uh, Keith, that it's, novel it's is it's rough. It's my yeah, second favorite novel of all time after a little Yeah, bit. I would think it would be very difficult. But the movie itself <laughs> it's is powerful. tough enough. Yeah, but it's all inside his head because right. he, he he just wants to die and they won't let him die and they can't communicate with him. He can't communicate with them. There's a nurse who's taking care of him. He gets to know her touch, you know, but uh eventually well, in, the, lo- in the book she masturbates him well which you know nurses remember. did that a lot in, in yeah. those wars i, found I think out. she mm-hmm. might have done that in the movie now i'm thinking about yeah it, they don't show it but yeah yeah but uh, i think they implied it um uh, and yeah and yeah they implied it there yeah yeah i'm pretty sure that happened in the movie too uh it's been a couple of years since i saw it but um you know it's just really powerful that we'd have flashbacks we see him you know, mm-hmm. so we get to see these flashback memories and things. Um, Donald Sutherland makes an appearance as Jesus. That's a cool moment. Um, he, he has these surrealistic he's... visions. That, yeah, that's yeah, in yeah. The book too. He has these visions yeah. in his head. So that's in all. Head, that's yeah. interesting. Um, you know, it's and he does eventually co- co- seem to be able to communicate uh, that he wants them to kill him by Morse you know, code. By yeah, banging his head into Morse code uh but the army uh says that that's against the regulation so they're gonna they're gonna keep him alive so even those poor guys just begging them to just kill him uh he, they won't do it and the so book, he's left alive the yeah. book the book ends after it goes on a little after what you're describing in his head and he he writes this it's some of the most breathtaking and depressing yet inspiring things I've ever read. I can't quote it exactly, but it's like a paragraph. And basically he has foreseen himself now as like a prophet of sorts. Like he's seen the truth seen like inner scene, but also seen Mm -hmm. while he could what war really is, what it really is, not what any nation says it is or media. And and then he's like, you know, you keep you keep telling us to go to the fields. You keep handing us the rifles. And he says something, and I'm paraphrasing. He's, basically, it's like, you give us the guns, you masters of men. You give us the guns, and this time we will point them at you. Mm. Mm. So... Yeah. <laughs> That's very Trumbo esque. Uh, yeah. And so, anyway, yes, a very disturbing movie, but in, in all good ways. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's yeah. good to be disturbed. Uh, so, if it, you know, if you've never seen it, try, you know, see if you can track it down. I, I did. I went tracking it down to find it on DVD. Yeah. I bought it on DVD from Amazon, it. but I, um, I did end up buying it, selling it. But, uh, you know, it's incredible. Maybe, maybe I bought it from you. I don't know. <laughs> did you buy it on ebay i don't remember where i bought okay. it I but it may say, have I, been from you <laughs> i saw i saw it someone i saw it on tape years ago and then i didn't see it again for a long time and then i i just bought the the, the dvd and i had it for a while and then it ended up my ebay store you know where i need to make money but but it's I, it should be on blu-ray if it was on blu-ray i would i would still own yeah. it and i'm yeah. lucky to have it and, and and it really you're right you're really shocked me by picking that, not because I don't know about it, obviously, but 
because it's such a great choice for the theme. Just yeah. really fantastic key. So anyway, now I got to go. So oh. I leave you with that. Uh, Johnny Got His Gun is a recommended Disturbed movie if you've never seen it. All right, oh, yeah. man. All right, guys. Take it easy. Take it easy.